Up next, sculpting a dungeon wall for the Frankenstein diorama. Hey everybody, it's Kenny Conklin from SciFiAntasy.com and welcome to another Sprue Hub video. Thanks for everybody that's been coming over to the site and registering and putting up your videos on Sprue Hub. So today we're going to take you through a little tutorial of how I made a stone wall for the dungeon yesterday. I'm an idiot. I threw out my original one not thinking I was going to make a video on it. But we're going to make a video on it today because I'm going to do it a little different than I did in this picture here. In that picture you can see the stones look really good. The grooves between the stones are a little larger and that's because I used a soldering iron to do that portion. I want to make the grooves a little smaller like on the Mobius kit here to match up a little bit better. This way it kind of looks the same. But I'm going to take you through that whole process here in a little while. So what we have is half the wooden floor down. I have to extend the wooden floor here but I want to finish the stairs first. I got a first layer of plaster of Paris on here. Got to sand more of this down. The door, I was going to make it swinging, but I'm not going to make it swinging anymore. It's going to be in the position that it was on the original kit. The only difference is it doesn't have the pegs going through the floor, so it doesn't look like it's just pegged into the floor. Back here, we're going to have a little dungeon. We're going to have the stone walls, and we're going to build another wooden floor back here. And we're going to have some effects going on in the background behind them. That's why I'm not going to close the door. Why make the effects if we're going to have the door closed and you can't see them anyhow? One of the things I don't like on the kit is the smoothness inside here and the smoothness on the side over here. So in here I'm probably going to put more wood to make it look like it's a wooden frame holding up the stone or I may use styrene and make it look like a metal frame or something like that is holding up the wall. On the side here it's just totally smooth doesn't look good especially since we're making more of a dungeon over here. So what I did was I took two pieces of uh, balsa wood, cut it down to size, glued them together, clamped them overnight, left them 24 hours. Now you can beat somebody with it. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take this guy and we're going to put it on the side here to cover up that smoothness and make it look like a huge pillar is holding up the wall and you know the imaginary ceiling that we're supposed to believe is over here and we're going to put the other brick wall over here. I like that better than just leaving it blank like this or trying to bring the foam out a little more. I don't think that would look that good because the foam is going to be on the back edge over here. So we'll just make that pillar right there and make it look like it's holding up the wall going up this way. Also the monster is He's magnetized down. I gotta pull up on him a little bit. And that's so if I wanna move him around or when we do move, I could just take him off, wrap him up, and I don't have to worry about him falling down. So that's pretty much on this. But I wanna to talk to you about one more thing before we get over to the tutorial. Don't forget, we have three Amazon stores one in the US, one in Canada and one in the UK. If you're doing your hobby shopping for models, glue, airbrushes, air filters for your um, spray booth. Anything that's hobby related, I have a whole bunch of stuff on there on all three sites. If you don't see it, send me the link or you can actually just go to our linked store and keep shopping from that link. So if you go to amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash sci-fi fantasy in the US and you go shopping for anything on the site, as long as you originally go to our store, you can buy anything and we'll get the commission for it. These commissions are not going into my pocket. What we're going to use them for is uh, wards for any contests that we have, some more giveaways hopefully, and keeping the sites up and running. So it's not anything to get rich off of. It's hopefully maybe a, like 50 to 100 bucks every month. This way we could throw it back into the sites and we can throw it back to you guys because that's what we do this for because we like giving back to the community. Hopefully we see you guys over at the HLI community over there sharing your builds and all that other good stuff. So now let's get over to the bench and show you what's going on. Okay, the things that we're gonna need for the project are the pink insulating foam board, which I picked up at Home Depot. I think it's a 24 by 24 sheet and it's about $7. The hot foam cutting knife. This is a set that comes with another wire, this little tip attachment here and the knife. Joint compound or you don't want to use plaster of Paris, joint, joint compound is your best bet. 
some kind of putty knife, and a rolled up ball of tin foil. Make it however you want, just make sure there's a lot of edges on that guy. This little knife here, you could also use your soldering iron, but the lines do come out big. The tip that's on here actually makes the same kind of cuts in the foam as the soldering iron does, and this one will make smaller ones. If you're interested in this, I'll put up the link to our Amazon store that has this, and hopefully if you do get it, you come to the Amazon store and buy it. Now with this thing too, don't think it doesn't get hot. It gets hot very, very quick and you will burn yourself with it. Uh, some people on Facebook were telling me, oh no, the wire doesn't get that hot. Bull crap. This thing gets hot, be careful. It does cool down quickly, but it gets hot very quickly. So do not burn yourself with this. So let me get set up and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So the first thing you wanna do is decide on which tip you wanna use. Do you wanna use the bigger tip or do you wanna use the smaller tip? What I'm gonna be using is the smaller tip because like I said, I want smaller lines. This way it looks more even with the diorama that's already pre-made. So this just pulls out. It's a two prong little plug. Take this guy, find the correct way to put it in and drop it in there. This comes with an on off switch. So we're just gonna plug this guy in and then we're gonna show you what we're gonna do. Okay, this guy is heated up. It only took about 10 seconds for this to get hot. And like I said, I'm using the small one. Now this is just a scrap piece that I'm gonna do my work on. When you do your work, make sure that you know which way your wall's going. If you're gonna use, I'm sorry, it goes all the way out, but if you're gonna be using this small piece of wall and you want your stones looking a certain way this way, make sure you hold it that way. Because yesterday when I did the stone wall that I showed you at the beginning, I did it across because that's how I wanted the wall to go, but then I tested it on the base when I put it this way, the rocks didn't look that good. So just figure out which way you want your wall and do your, your stones accordingly. So this guy is hot. And all you have to do with this guy is start making your stones. You're just gonna make random patterns. You can go as deep as you want or as light as you want. And there will be some stringing on it. Don't worry about that. You just, you just pull it off later. So you can make your stone shapes any way you want to. And I usually work from the top to the bottom and then I'll throw something in the middle. You can make bigger ones. You can make smaller ones, whatever you want. When you do get to another line, just make sure that you Bring it into the other one this way, you know, it all fits, it fits right. So I'm gonna do this and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so we did our random rock pattern, big ones, small ones, medium ones. Now you could take this guy again, or you could take a bigger one and just take, make some marks and stuff in some of the stones, like there's indents in the stones, imperfections. You don't have to do it in all of them but you could do it in some of, some of them, just random, random patterns and ding marks because we want to add more texture to these stones. Like I said, you don't have to do it on all of them. You can make some more messed up than others and you just got to lightly touch it and mess up the surface a bit, but this isn't the end of the texturing. Maybe I'll do this one over here too. Happy little wax, make that guy a little deeper over there. So we got some dings and stuff like that in here. So let me show you the next part of the process. So as you can see, again, we have our lines, we have our little dings and stuff like that, but again, very flat, shiny. We don't want that for the end results because we do have a couple more steps to go. I'm doing this quick so I didn't take off all the little spider webs from it, but you could get those off. Next up, you're gonna take your tin foil ball. Now I've seen this on another video. I don't remember who it was, but this is how I learned how to do the texturing on this. Just get yourself a tin foil ball, make sure it's got a lot of edges on there, and then just start going like this to get that texture into the wall. You're just gonna rub, hurt your hand a little bit, 
and rub it all over. And you can rub this as much as you want or as little as you want and make, make the texture how you want it on the rocks. So I'm gonna finish this up so you don't have to keep seeing me rolling and then I'll show you how the texture is once I'm done doing this. Okay, now that I, you can see hopefully that I've roughed it up. Now when you take your ball, just flip it around a couple times and put different pressure, harder pressure in some areas, medium pressure in others. Don't go too low on the pressure because then you'll see, like I missed up in the corner here because I wasn't going that hard with it. So if you miss something, just take your ball. Oops, don't do what I did. Don't break the corner, I should have held it. I should have remembered that from yesterday. The corners, just give it a nice little thing. I could actually leave that. I could leave it as a broken stone if I want to and work with that, but this is just a test piece. But be careful on your corners, I forgot. I did that yesterday too on a second test piece. So you're just gonna use tin foil, go all around, and the next step is going to be the plaster. Okay, next up is all I'm gonna do is put the joint compound on here, work it into the grooves, and then take it off. You could use plaster of Paris, but you wanna be pretty quick with that. So I just take it, let me get the bucket out of the way, and I start smashing it into the grooves. And then I don't have anything wet here, but what you want to do is you want to wipe off the excess. This way, I don't have to worry about it later, trying to get it off because you don't want to have to be sitting here sanding everything down. And you could get a little messy, like I am now. I bought cheap joint compounds. Ah! because I don't feel like spending money on a five gallon bucket, so I got the cheapest stuff they have. I'm trying to keep this on in frame for you. I'm doing it by myself. It's the boy's in his room doing something. And that's all you're gonna do. And then if you have a lot of excess, you get a wet cloth or a wet sponge, and you just wipe it down. You may wanna leave some on there, and it gives it a little haze to it. And this is all I'm doing is I'm pulling and filling in our grooves. So I'm gonna finish this up and then I'm gonna wipe it down with a wet cloth to take that off and I'll show you the result of that. And this is the piece after I wipe it down. It's still wet right now and I wipe it pretty much almost all the way off but I leave a little of the joint compound on the outside to give it that hazy look and you can hopefully, you can see the texture that's in it from the, um, whatchamacallit, the tinfoil ball. But it's easy as that to make yourself a stone wall. We're not gonna leave it pink. You can prime over this and then paint your stones in the different grays and stuff like that, highlight, wash. That's why you wanna add some, some texture to this so you can throw a wash on there and get it going. Now I hit it with a hair dryer real quick just to start the drying process of the joint compound. And what I wanted to show you is I'm hoping you can see it. Why I like the joint compound is because it actually shrinks when it's drying and it leaves the stone pushed out a little bit. So it looks like the wall is, is pushed out and it's not just flat. I think with the plaster of Paris, you're gonna smooth it out and it's gonna be flat and the plaster of Paris really isn't gonna shrink like the joint compound. And you can see the little texture in here from the the tin foil ball and stuff like that. And you will see this stuff painted up when I do the wall for the diorama. Right now I'm not gonna paint it, I just wanted to show you how to do the wall itself. So hopefully this helped you out. And I think they look pretty good doing it this way. It's not a bad stone wall at all, just be, be random with your stuff. Well that's it for how I'm making stone walls for my diorama. I did rush through this a little bit, but if you take your time and make your cuts nicely. I mean, this is, this is pretty good for a quick one and a quick coating of joint compound. So you can go around making your own brick walls. If you want thicker lines, use the other head on that piece or use a soldering iron and you can make thicker lines between the stone and you'll have a nice job. And I should have probably went a little heavier on the tin foil ball, but otherwise it's pretty good. I'm not using this one, but I have to do it again because I have to make some walls for that. Thank you everybody for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, just throw it in the comments section below. I hope you guys come and register at sprewhub.com. This way you can comment over there, like, join, 
put your videos up and all that other good stuff. And don't forget to come to Amazon and do your shopping with us. Have a great night, everybody. Take care and bye-bye.